So I'm going to show you three simple methods for blending two different images in Photoshop. And this is a very simple way. So if you generally work in Lightroom, this is the tutorial for you. And um, these are three very basic methods and each one has a different reason or different approach for why you would use it. And once you've blended your two photos together, you can import them back into Lightroom and continue editing in your Lightroom workflow. Okay, the first method for blending two images together is a very simple method. And for this example, I have these two shots that I shot in the Cedarburg. And you can see in this one, I exposed for the sky and the beautiful cloud that I have. And in the second exposure, I exposed for the detail in the cave. So I can pull up all the detail from the cave in that exposure, but I would have blown out the highlights if I try to do it all in one photo. And this is an example of a shot that you couldn't necessarily use a grad filter to compensate with as you couldn't just put the grad over that area. So there are examples where you can get away with using filters instead of doing the blending method. And then there are instances like in this image where I would have to blend instead of using filters. So these are my two exposures and I will just show you my settings for them. This one I shot for four seconds for the sky and I did an eight second for the internals of the cave. So very simply, what we're going to do is we're going to select both images with either shift or command, right click and go edit in open as layers in Photoshop. So we're going to open them together in Photoshop as layers. You don't need to understand a lot about Photoshop. Just really, you need to follow these steps and you can blend and then we'll go back into Lightroom and you can continue to edit your workflow as you would normally do. Okay, once you've opened your photos as layers in Photoshop, if you come down to the bottom right of your screen, you'll see your two layers and these two little eye icons. If you unselect the top one, and you will see the layer below. So kind of think layers of like stacks of paper, one on top of each other. If you have a layer on top, that's the layer that you will see. And the only way to see the bottom layer is to untick the little eye icon to see the difference between the two. So for this workflow, I like to always put my sky on the top. It just makes it easier for me to process in my brain. The sky is at the top, foreground's at the bottom, um, and it allows me to work a lot better. So I'm just going to call this one our sky layer, and this is going to be our foreground layer. Now the method is very quick and simple. We're going to use the quick select tool. So if you come across to the left, you'll see this little paintbrush with a dotted line around it and it says quick selection tool. We're going to click on that and we're going to click on our sky. And you see as I draw, it automatically jumps to what is a very similar luminance and we'll select that. And that's a very quick way of doing our quick selection tool. Once we've selected the area, and this tool works really well if there's like a hard edge, like the edge of a cave, the edge of rocks, um, the horizon, something like that. Quick selection tool works really well. And then we're going to click on our sky layer because we have selected the sky. And we're going to click on add layer mask. This little icon at the bottom here that says add layer mask. It's a little rectangle with a black or gray circle in the middle. And once we click that, it's just basically going to take our active selection and create a mask for it. And the very basic thing you need to know about masks is white reveals, black conceals. That is the best way to remember it. And if you look at the mask, you can see there is the little white area mimicking this area of our sky. So if we unselect, you can see before and after. And that's a quick way to do it. Then just zoom in and just have a look at your edges, go around your image and check the edges. But the active selection is very good at making a very clean copy of the sky. So that's quick selection, super easy. Now to get back to our Lightroom, we just go file and we click save and go back to Lightroom, what it will do is automatically save a copy of what we did in Photoshop back into our Lightroom file. 
So now I'd save this copy of the blended file back into Lightroom and you can continue with your normal workflow in Lightroom. Okay, the second method I'm going to show you is using the sky selection tool. The AI in Photoshop and Lightroom is very good at sky selection and you probably use the sky selection tool on your single images to do some edits to the sky. But now we can do the same thing in Photoshop with two separate images. So remember blending is two separate images. We're not working on one image. We're going to combine two different exposures. So for this example of two separate exposures, we're going to blend and use the sky um, selection tool. I have this image taken at Decalda's, a seascape image, and I have this nice exposure for the sky. And then I have a second image, which is lighter for the foreground. So I want to blend these two together. I select both of them, go edit in, open as layers in Photoshop, exactly the same way that we did for the quick selection tool. And now we have both our layers in Photoshop. Again, always like to keep my sky layer on the top. So that's my sky, which is the darker one. And my foreground is the lower one. And clicked on my sky layer. I'm going to go to select sky so we're going to go select sky we're going to click on sky and it's going to do a sky selection like it would do in lightroom when you're editing with the sky mask and you can see it's made a very good selection of our sky and then we're going to click on the add layer mask button which is this little button again at the bottom and there is our sky selection added to our foreground so again you can zoom in you can do a little check and check everything's nice and sharp and blended well but the new ai on photoshop and lightroom for the sky selection is brilliant and does a very good job and now we can do exactly the same thing we can go file click save and it will save a copy of these blended photos back into lightroom and you can continue with your lightroom workflow or for those of you who are comfortable in photoshop you can stay in photoshop and continue editing here okay just carrying on from the sky selection tool i just want to show you an example of maybe where it doesn't work and how we can Combine the sky selection tool with the quick selection tool um, to get a perfect selection of the sky we want. So an example of the pictures I'm going to use is <clears throat> these two that are, it's the same image, but I've edited them separately. One for the foreground um, for these rocks here and one for the sky, which I made more blue and picked out some of the colors of the Milky Way. But I want to blend these two edits together, which I can't do in Lightroom. I need to be able to go into Photoshop to blend my separate sky edit from my separate foreground edit. So what we do then is we select both photos and we say open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, I'm gonna have my sky at the top and my foreground at the bottom of my layers. And I'm gonna use the select sky tool and let's see how well it does. Okay, so if we have a look, we can see there's some issues with this one with the select sky. And you can see over here on the left, it selected some of the foreground and in the bottom, it hasn't selected all the sky in this archway. So for astrophotos, it does struggle a bit. It's much better for daytime images. But I'm going to show you how we can combine this quick selection um, of the sky with our quick select tool. So we've done the sky selection. We don't need to get rid of that. We can just click on our quick select tool. And if you look at the top here, it says plus or minus. So the areas we want to minus, we'll switch to the minus tool and then we'll just draw wherever we don't want there to be any active selection. And then we'll go to the plus tool, zoom in and just add in the areas that we want to add in. And you can see it automatically finds the edge for us, which is brilliant, it's a very smart tool. So we just got to do a very rough drawing of what we want to add in just so it knows the bits that we want to add in and we can come right up here into the corner and we can draw right into the corner and get a very very good selection and we can even add this little bit here in between the legs um, of the person um, that white light let's see let's go to the subtract tool we want to actually subtract that area and maybe this bit on the face we want to subtract as well Okay, so check all your corners. Maybe add this last little bit here in this corner. Don't do such a good job. Let's 
touching the rock a little bit so we can just subtract that off there. And there we go, it looks like a pretty good selection. And once we've done that, then we go and we collect, uh, click our add layer mask. And there's our final result. So you can see from that before, and we'll just blend it in the sky. And then you can go in and you can check and you can refine with the quick selection tool. But based on what we did now, I think that did a very good job. at blending those two layers together. So that's a nice way to combine the sky selection with the quick selection. And then you just got to try and work out which one works best for the photo that you have. Not every method is going to be ideal for the particular scene or that you have. So you need to be able to use multiple methods together.